Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Divya and I love to talk about everything becoming your best self. And today, I am going to share with you everything that I keep in my wellness toolbox. As someone that is constantly editing and curating my habits and routines to find the things that can really boost my happiness and make me more energized, I have tried a lot of tricks and habits out there to see what really worked for me. And while some of them do not really stand the test of time, some have been a really good fit and really helped change my life in the most beautiful ways. So we're gonna talk about all those habits today. I have talked about this concept of a wellness toolbox previously on my channel, which is basically this imaginary toolbox that I keep, which is really a note in my notes app where I just list all the things that help me feel happier and also perform better. As I go through that list of habits, I'm going to share with you my personal review on those habits and how I am implementing them in my life. Without further ado, let's get into it and we'll start with the most important one movement okay so i feel like movement is a very tricky topic to talk about you know it's like when you see someone with such a beautiful and clear skin and you ask them what is your number one tip and they reply to you drink water i feel like that is kind of the same situation with movement people just don't want to hear about it but please hear me out and don't click out of this video yet because what i am about to say might really you know change your life because it did change mine. For the longest time, I did not have the best relationship with movement. I considered it as a punishment against the calories that I was consuming and a way to get me the body that I wanted. If we're just being honest, that's what it was. And obviously while I was in this mindset, I saw working out as a chore and it would require me so much energy and so much effort to get me going and get me to do something and the movement that i would choose to do would just be like running on the treadmill because i thought this was the most effective way to burn calories right but it was not something that i enjoyed at all now i really see movement as this habit that can really transform my mental health because it truly has. Moving my body helps me clear my mind, it helps me release stress, and also it just helps me feel so much happier. And really, on the days that I choose to move my body, I do realize that during the day I'll have so much more energy. Whereas like in the days that I don't do any kind of movement, then I definitely feel so much more sluggish. I can't really recall a moment where this shift happened for me, where I stopped seeing movement as the enemy and I kind of started seeing it as an ally for my mental health, my energy levels, my focus and my happiness but at some point it did happen and I feel like it did coincide with the moment where I also kind of like opened up my horizons in terms of type of movement and try different things. Before I used to just believe that you know you should be running on a treadmill and that is what movement was all about. But then I really tried to like go to workout classes and I started doing um, Pilates and I started doing cycling and just like so many different types of movement until I found those that I truly enjoyed and that's what stuck. And that's what I actually also encourage you to do. If for now, for some reason, you just don't believe in movement, listen, I get it because I was there and it was never like something that I was excited about, but the minute that I found the right type of movement for me, it just all clicked. And now I look forward to go and work out, you know, whether it is Pilates or playing paddle, I am planning it out every single day of the week because it's my moment, it's my me time that brings me so much joy and that I know is going to just set the tone for the rest of my day. The point is, if you don't enjoy something, don't do it. If you don't wanna run, don't run. If you don't wanna lift weights, you don't have to be lifting weights. Just find something that works for you. The truth is your mind and your body are so closely connected. And when you make it a habit to move your body, you're going to feel so much more settled and so much more at peace in here. I would have never thought that I would think about movement this way, but today it's really a non-negotiable for me. 
Meditation. If I'm being completely honest, I don't really have the most stable relationship with meditation. I would sometimes meditate every day for a month and then go out of it for a couple of months at a time. It really comes and goes and I don't force it because I know that it is a tool that I can just reach out from my toolbox whenever I need it. But from what I can say about meditation is that a little goes a long way. I used to think that you had to meditate for 30 minutes if you wanted it to count for something. And I could never reach that time, okay? I can only do 10 minutes and yet it helps me so much. I see the calmness that it brings me during the day. It improves my focus so much and it just makes me feel so much more grounded. As someone that can be a little bit impulsive at times, meditation provides me the peace that I need for me not to react based on my emotions. So I really love it and you know on times that I feel a little bit more anxiety and a little bit more stress and a little bit like more all over the place I know that this is the place that I need to go back to and just create a habit of like meditating every day or every two other day and that usually works. In the beginning I really did not know how to meditate so I went on YouTube and I did the guided meditations out there. There are so many and there are so many great ones so I definitely urge you to try but then now I discovered mantra meditation which is something that I really resonate with because it really provides me a focus during my meditation sessions which can be very helpful especially for me who tends to get distracted quite easily so yeah there are so many different types of meditation out there you can definitely find the best fit for you no phone after waking up this has been a big one for me because like a lot of us out there, for the longest time, my first thing that I would do in the morning was pick up my phone and obviously go to the social media apps. It took a lot of effort for me to break that pattern, but now once that I did it, I am not going back because it has been life changing. When you are picking your phone first thing in the morning and going on those social media apps, you are seeing so many different lives of people out there in just a matter of minutes. And the thing is that you're not really in control with what you're seeing and what you're being exposed to. And most of the time, it's not that positive. If you think about it, you might not want to feed that to your brain first thing in the morning. In the morning, it needs time and space for it to be creative and for it to be proactive. Plus, studies have shown that picking up your phone first thing in the morning is really going to impact how you focus during the day. It's going to make you more distracted. And in a time where our attention span just keeps getting shorter and shorter, I think we need to limit the damage that is unnecessary. But I know how hard it can be to break a habit or a pattern. And I find that the easiest way to do that is to replace that habit with something else. Maybe something that is going to be a bit more nourishing for your mind, like reading or journaling or even learning something new. Reading. When I was a child, I remember how I would save all my pocket money to go and buy books at the bookstores. I love books and bookstores were really my happy place. But once I became an adult, I thought that I had to switch from fiction to nonfiction to be a bit more serious, you know, and to learn some stuff. But the truth is I never liked nonfiction books. I found them a little bit boring. I just didn't like the fact that something that could be said in just a few pages would take a whole book just because the author had to write a certain amount of words. Obviously, that is a little bit dramatic, but the point is I fell out of books because of that, because I thought that I had to read a certain type of books only. But in reality, there are no rules and you can read whatever you want. And to be honest, life is too short for a bad book. So this year, I actually made the resolution to read mostly fiction books because of how much value and how much joy they brought me. And so far, so good. I've been reading so much more this year and I just really love it. I consider books as a source of entertainment and the fact that it helps me limit my screen time is a beautiful added bonus. Eating nutritious foods. This one is a bit related to movement in a sense that I also had a very tricky relationship when it comes to foods. I used to see it as something that would make me gain weight 
rather than something that would help me fuel my body. I was seeing food as an enemy rather than an ally, which is what it really is. And to be honest, it took me a while to understand that. Now I really see it when I eat clean foods, I have such better energy levels, I am able to focus better, and I feel stronger in my body. Whereas when I eat those processed or fried foods, maybe in the moment itself, I feel good about it, but then my energy level drops and I feel incredibly sluggish. But of course, like everyone, from time to time, I love treating myself. I mean, I love a donut once in a while. I love having croissants in the morning and I like myself some french fries. So I really try to adopt the 80-20 rule as much as I can because that is a great balance for me that works really well for my lifestyle. I am on one side able to keep myself strong and just like have my energy levels where I want them to be but at the same time treat myself whenever I feel like it. Another thing that really helped me fuel my body better is that I made a list of all the foods that I truly enjoyed eating. So all the vegetables and all the foods that I really like so that I won't be forcing myself to eat the things that are good for you but I don't really like. So what happens is now maybe my meals don't really look like it makes a lot of sense because it looks like a bunch of ingredients just thrown together very randomly but I am the one eating it and I'm the one enjoying everything on that plate because those foods are picked out by me and they make sense to me and that's what really matters. And in the long run, I think that this is, I don't know, a very sustainable option for me. Journaling. This one is no secret. I love journaling so much so that I have created my own digital journal that you can download for free. I have included the link in the description box. But yeah, journaling has changed my life in so many ways, but mostly it has helped me deal with anxiety and stress and bring me so much happiness and get to know myself better. And although sometimes I don't really feel like journaling, I do make it a point to still journal at least three times a week just because I am very aware of the beautiful benefits that can come out of it. I have seen periods in my life where I was very regular with my journal practice and periods in my life where I neglected it a little bit and there is such a strong correlation between my level of anxiety and happiness and just keeping those like impacts in mind is a big motivator for me to pick up my journal and just do it for 10 minutes. But I definitely see how journaling is not for everyone. It has a very big dear diary moment cliche associated to it, but there are so many different types of journaling out there that I feel like there is a perfect fit for everyone. Personally, there are two types of journaling that I mainly do. The first one is just like dissecting my emotions and my thoughts on a topic or something that happened. It kind of helps me take a step back and approach the situation in a more neutral way. And another type of journaling that I love to do is scripting, which is basically where you write about maybe a day in your ideal life as if it has already happened. It's another type of manifestation which works so well and I definitely encourage you to give it a try. A good night of sleep. This is a tool in my toolbox that I am not necessarily the best at, but I'm really working on improving the quality of my sleep. I mean, we have all seen the difference between the nights where we had a great night of sleep and the nights that were kind of rough, right? When you have a good night of sleep, you wake up feeling so fresh and really good about yourself. Whereas when you wake up from a very crappy night, well then your mood is off, your focus is questionable and your overall energy is just not that great. I have come to a point where I am very aware of the different factors that can really impact the quality of my sleep and for me that is the type of foods that I'm consuming, if I am having any type of alcohol but also what type of content I am being exposed to before going to sleep. So now if I know that the next day I need to wake up very early because I have a workout or because I need to show up in some sort of way that requires a lot of energy, then I am gonna make sure that I am only eating clean foods, I'm staying away from alcohol, and I am limiting my content to something that is very comforting. I'm someone that has nightmares quite often, so for me, I stick to watching Friends, watching Disney, and good old rom-coms, and that's just worse for me. So yeah, for me, sleep is a tool that I use to optimize my performance for the next day. Drinking water. 
This one is such a big understatement, right? Everyone knows they should be drinking water and yet they are probably not drinking enough. A little bit like me because if I'm being honest, it does not come easy to me. It requires a lot of effort for me to meet my two liters of water per day but I really try to make it happen because water has such a big impact on my skin. Whenever my skin is not doing good and I know it is very linked to my hydration levels, well, my confidence takes a hit and I can't have that. So for me, water is essential, especially for that. And what I do in order to make it a little bit easier for me is that first of all, I got a very big bottle of water that I just need to fill out once a day. So that kind of like eliminates the effort of going to fill out my glass every 30 minutes or so. And another thing that I do is I kind of jazz up my water. So I like to add lemon juice to my water because I just love the taste. But I know a lot of people add cut fruits or cucumbers to their water just because you know it just makes it easier for them to drink it whatever it is just try to make it happen because i mean it's essential i have nothing else to say about it gratitude gratitude is a tool that i use whenever i see that things are not really going my way or I find myself being a little bit more negative or complaining too much. It helps me turn tables instantly and it helps me to kind of like notice all the beautiful things that I already have in my life. But also whenever I feel like, you know, I have a little bit more anxiety than usual or I feel stress creeping in, I reach out to gratitude immediately because I know that it calms me down so so much and it kind of helps me put matters into perspective. The great thing about this feeling of gratitude is that it puts you on a frequency that is going to help you receive more experiences that match that frequency. I have realized that the minute that I switch to a gratitude mindset, it's like a domino effect and more beautiful things happen in my life. Sometimes we're just so caught up with life and we forget to realize how lucky we really are. And the minute we switch to a gratitude mindset, we stop being oblivious to all those beautiful things that are happening to us. And we start realizing how truly blessed we really are. Having a hobby. Whatever happened to having a hobby just for the sake of having a hobby, right? I feel like nowadays people are just finding ways to monetize every single aspect of their lives or they're trying to turn something that they enjoy into a side hustle. And while there is nothing wrong with that, it's actually very admirable and it shows how ambitious you are, I think it's a little bit sad that people don't do things just for the sake of enjoyment. You know what I mean? I used to have video editing as a hobby, but since I am trying to monetize that, I have made it a point to still engage in other hobbies to distract myself and entertain myself. And those are baking and painting. And I just love this time that I spend with myself doing those things because I feel like, you know, they boost my creativity, they help me zone out the stress, but they also bring me a lot of satisfaction and happiness. I definitely encourage you to find out what your hobbies could be because for me, it has brought me a lot of fulfillment. On Sundays, I try to stay away from work as much as possible and the things that I do allow myself to do is spending time with my loved ones, um, taking care of myself, and engaging in my hobbies. And that is really the thing that helps me kind of like fill my cup before starting the week. So, you know, definitely try out different things to find out what could be your next hobby. Anyways, those were my 10 wellness habits that I keep in my toolbox. It has been great building this toolbox over the years, but mostly now I know that, you know, whenever I am feeling the feels, I actually have this list in my notes app that I can reach out to and I know that there is something for every mood. I definitely encourage you to build your own toolbox by opening up your mind and trying out different habits and routines in the hopes that you'll find the perfect fit for you. Believe me, it is so helpful and you are going to love it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and attention and I will see you soon for another video. Thank you.